In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. For the first time in 11 days, we get to celebrate Mass in church instead of outside. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. I'll spare you the rest. Uh, we give thanks to God for this, for being back, and uh, the fact that our, although some people in our community did suffer some major uh, damage, for the large part, our community was spared the devastation that we see elsewhere. So let us give thanks to the Lord, and let us uh, call upon him now as we confess our sins and ask for his mercy. Your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You're a son of God and son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Your word made flesh, the splendor of God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. 
Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not, will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice a splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, but when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye, you hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will clearly see to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. to keep my job uh, at the seminary two days a week, and yesterday I had spiritual direction for several seminarians. We did it by telephone, but it was uh, several hours uh, in the afternoon. And uh, as a result of still being on the staff at the seminary, I get Father Jim's, the, he's the rector of the seminary, and I get his uh, regular update. He usually sends a weekly update. And I will say that in almost every update he sends, there's something about avoiding cynicism. He's constantly preaching about avoiding cynicism and negativity. And you may be shocked that seminarians would struggle with cynicism and negativity, right? But we all do. And uh, Jesus hits that head on in today's gospel. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you dare say to your brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. Translation, you have more faults than the person you're criticizing. That's it, it's just that simple. And uh, it's a fact that the things that usually grate on us most about somebody are the same faults that we have. And they're in us, though we're not aware of it. But when we see it in somebody else, they aggravate us because they're our faults. And so Jesus says we need to spend less time pointing out the faults, picking at others, being negative, judgmental, and cynical and instead look inward and clean up our own house. And if we do that, we'll be more Christ-like, and uh, besides being more Christ-like, we'll be more peaceful. It's very easy to look at what's happening in the um, aftermath of the storm and critique the energy workers they are not working fast enough or smart enough, or the construction workers, or I heard somebody say, well, why are the grocery stores only open till six o'clock in the evening? Or, all kinds of other questions. It's just, some people are just never satisfied. They will just find something to pick about at everything. This is a grave sin to have a judgmental, negative, cynical spirit. In fact, if you look at all the sins that Jesus names and criticizes, it's the one he talks about the most. And we all have this to some extent, others a larger degree maybe than, than, than some. But we need to quell that voice of cynicism. And when we see it, the first thing to think about is, you know, I'm really not praying enough. Because if I were praying more and really steeped in prayer, then the Lord would gently show me my own faults and assure me he loves me anyway in spite of all my faults. And then it wouldn't even cross my mind to criticize somebody else. The more we find fault with others, the more is an invitation to go deeper and deeper in prayer. So instead of being upset and negative and cynical with the recovery or whatever it may be, or maybe we were intensely with family members or beloved friends over the uh, evacuation time, 
and uh, maybe we got to see all their faults in living technicolor. Instead of thinking about them in terms of their faults, let's ask the Lord to think about ourselves in terms of our faults and uh, how kind and patient and merciful and generous God is with us. And let's ask for the grace to be that way with others. And uh, instead of criticizing all the people who are trying to help us, even if they're doing it imperfectly or inefficiently in our estimation, let's give thanks to God that they have left their families in New Jersey and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and all around the country and Texas and Atlanta to come here and help us get back on our feet. Let's ask God for a spirit of encouragement, optimism, and thanksgiving instead of the negativity. Let's now stand and bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. But let's pray in continued blessing of God on all the work people who are in our area, helping us to recover from this hurricane, that God may bless them for their generosity and strengthen them for their task. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all of the sick, for those who have COVID, for those who uh, are suffering with cancer and other illnesses. And let's pray for all the hospital and medical care workers who are helping them to be healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord God. Let's pray for all of our family members, of uh, who uh, some of whom are still evacuated and haven't returned. But let's pray for God's blessing on them and that this whole experience may lead us to reorient our values and focus more on the importance of our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Uh, we pray for all of our, uh, for our school community and all school communities as, uh, as we and other schools attempt to get restarted in the coming week. We pray for our, our teachers and staff that they may have power restored to them soon. And uh, we pray for God's grace as we try to do a restart of the semester. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all of our devastated neighbors to the north and especially to the west who experience incredible property damage and even loss of life in this storm. That God may be merciful and generous to them in their recovery and that we may do our part to assist them. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for all the prayers and intentions that we bring here today, for those for whom this Mass is offered, for our faith community at St. Francis, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, we ask that you hear all of our prayers. We ask that you grant them according to your most holy will. And we make these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may faithfully be united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You have no need of our praise. 
Our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis Xavier, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power, all the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant that you're faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So tomorrow we are intending to have Mass, it's 8 o'clock Saturday morning Mass, uh, 4 o'clock Vigil Mass and the regular Mass schedule on Sunday, 8, 10, 12, and 6. Confessions will be tomorrow before and after the 8 o'clock Mass, 
and from 3 to 3.45 in the afternoon. Our Father Andrew will complete his quarantine on Sunday and he will return to service on Monday. So we'll go back to our regular weekday mass schedule, 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. beginning on Monday. We don't know when the Adoration Chapel will open. We need to be sure that the committed adorers are back in town and settled with their property and can come to their hour of adoration. Otherwise, it's too much stress on the uh, few people who run the program for us, especially on Dottie Watson. So we're not gonna get that back up and running until we know we can do it. And uh, other than that, I think that's it. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful weekend. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who crawl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I did fail to announce we still have several uh, staff members out of town who will be traveling back today and tomorrow. So our parish office will reopen on Monday at 8.30 a.m. We did get our Wi-Fi back in the church and also in the parish center. So I hope to be able to upload Sunday's outside Mass and also the Mass today on our YouTube channel. We hope that that will work. Have a blessed weekend. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day.